think you kind of hit an iceberg there as far as you had some very short hair for a while, and that's probably because you went through something in life that is hard for anybody to go through, and that's cancer. I did. I did. It was, it was actually a great eight months off from the Marine Corps. If that gives you a baseline of what it's like being 20 years in the Marine Corps. <laughs> I'd rather have cancer than be in the Marine Corps. Got I it. got a great eight, eight months off. <laughs> oh, man. So, you know, I've had my brushes with cancer with uh, my mom passing away of mm -hmm. cancer and things like that. Um, so cancer is very, you know, it's a big, yucky, ugly word kind of thing, but it's amazing to see people that have gone through it and have conquered it. Um, so what, what was your experience like? So having seen, the, the one thing I found out when I found out I had cancer was that nobody's history or nobody's treatment, nobody's story is ever the same. Yeah. You think, you know, like, oh, you have Hodgkin's lymphoma, and uh, let me put you in touch with my buddy. He, he went through it, or my, my sister went through it, or my nephew, or whatever. And they want you, you know, they give you all these contacts thinking, it's going to help and, and it in a way it does help because it's lethargic to talk to somebody mm -hmm. who's been there but when you start hearing their stories there's no story that's the same ever huh? ever uh, i even in the treatment facility down at balboa you know while i was there for three hours every two weeks uh, for four months getting my injections to to go through chemotherapy you know even talking to some of the nurses and doctors and the other patients nobody's story was ever the same Hmm. Nobody's experience with the treatment was ever the same. I know that Shannon's position on this is a little bit different than mine because she had to watch me go through it. So she couldn't feel what I was going through. Mm -hmm. She just saw the effects uh, of it on me. Whereas I, you know, it's probably because of my time in the Marine Corps, probably just, just the mentality I have, you know, over 20 years. And, you know, I, I look at it as my experience was fairly, fairly benign. Mm -hmm. um, our, our Peyton, uh, our daughter has a, a friend who had Hodgkin's lymphoma in high school mm -hmm. and he spent two, the better part of two years going through that. Um, and Maybe. touch and go, I mean, on a lot of cases, I mean, very bad go with his treatment, you know, infections, sickness, and stopping the treatment to, to get him better in one area. So, you know, in perspective, you know, my my blood white blood cell was low but I never got sick I mean I felt nauseous and I would in a two-week period I would go in to get my treatment I'd be nauseous for five days uh, just rest get out maybe walk the dog maybe get to a point where I could go run on a treadmill at the gym and then but as I got towards the end of my treatments then I was really only having about two or three good days in that two-week period mm -hmm. because it was the the treatment that was bothering me in the first five days and then I was good for a couple of days and then it was the anticipation of the treatment coming that made me feel sick again yeah and even to this day um, if I walk into the clinic to get a follow-up appointment or I you know even talking about it or smells or tastes or things Brain trigger uh, that that, that kind of nausea that, that, that sensation uh, the radiation was fairly easy I mean it was 15 seconds on the table uh, every day for 15 days, I think. Um, wow. That and it was right here at Loma Linda. So that's because cool. yeah, because it was so quick. You know, that's the great thing about military uh, Tricare and, and the medical system on active duty is that my treatments because of the duration, because uh, it was every two weeks and it was three hours at a time. They wanted me to go to Balboa, which that's fine. I mean, that's not that far. Of course, the commute on the 15 these days sucks, but it's, it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it was every day for 15 seconds, or I mean, it was really kind of 10 minutes going over there, but because of that, you know, high op tempo duration, they, they scheduled me up here so I didn't have to go all the way down to Bubba. So they, they made compromise to, you know, for me as the patient. That's cool. Which was great. They so were good to us. Yeah, so that, I mean, the, the reality, the, the, going back to deployment, so, <laughs> I had just taken orders before I found out I had cancer to go to Korea, and I had shipped off at, right after Thanksgiving to Korea uh, to work at a base over there for a year. And I thought that maybe I just had a cold. I, it just wasn't. So you felt a symptom, like something's not right. 
Well, I just felt sick. But, it, you know, we'd been out the desert. The kids had had the, you know, had a cold. And I just felt like I got over there. And it was, of course, cold in, in, in Korea. Um, and I just felt I was just still sick. And then through the December, I just kept having a persistent cough. And then into January, so about six weeks, I had a persistent cough. And thinking back, you know, at nights, you know, I had some cold sweats and some, you know, night chills. But... We would Skype when he was there because mm-hmm. he, he left for Korea with a cold. And I remember yeah. saying, oh, you're going to be on the plane sick, which is awful, you know, but you'll get there. It'll be fine. And then we'd Skype while he was there, and I kept hearing him have this cough. And it had been, like, weeks, mm-hmm. and it was still there. And he'd say, oh, I, well, I just went for a run, and it's cold. Or he'd always have, like, a reason for it. But there was something about it. It wasn't a regular cough. It was a different kind of cough. And I told him, go in, yeah. go in, please go in. And just so the audience knows, you actually have a medical background, Yes, right? I'm a registered nurse. Registered nurse. So yes. you kind of have those hunches or you yeah. you know, I, I can, mean, you've been doing yeah. it a long time. Sure. Yeah. And so I knew it wasn't, it wasn't regular. It, was, it wasn't right. It wasn't normal. Finally. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I had to go up to Seoul for a conference. And while I was up there, it just felt, I felt worse. Um, but it was also snowing. And... <laughs> I, I went up with a friend on to the up to the DMZ to check out the demilitarized zone up there, and and it started snowing while we were up there, and of course I was wearing a light jacket, not a heavy jacket, so the next day I felt just even worse, and I felt hot, and so I went in to get checked out, and I'd been six weeks since the cough had started, and so I'm sitting there, and this is an Air Force base, Air Force doctors, I mean I got to give the the doc, I'm not going to beat up on this sure. Air Force captain. I mean, he, he, he gave he diagnosed me, which he could have sent me away with nothing but a post-nasal drip, which is what he originally diagnosed me with when I walked in. But he's like, but let's be thorough, you know? He's like, I think it's just post-nasal drip. But let's just get an x-ray to make sure it's not pneumonia. And so he took me in. Yeah, was, it, the whole time I was there, it was probably about five hours that they had me in this little room, smaller than this one. Um, and he's like, let's go get an x-ray. So I'm like, okay, let's get an x-ray. So I wait, go get the x-ray. Wait some more. Come back. Um, yeah, there's something on the x-ray, but the, the CT scan's open, so I'm just going to get you in. We'll get it checked, you know, make sure that I'm being thorough. Could be, could be pneumonia, could be an infection, but we just want to be very thorough. I'm like, okay, let's go do it. So Wait no panic is set in or anything like that? No, I, I really, I just think maybe, okay, pneumonia or something. All right, that's fine. I can deal with that. There's medicine for that. And so it, no, no idea of what was coming next. So we go into the CT scan, I go back in, I'm waiting, that time probably wait about two hours. And he walks in and goes, okay, so I think you have Hodgkin's lymphoma. Just dropped it like that, huh? Just like that. that. And um, we're gonna need to start prepping to get you, we don't have any specialists here, but we're gonna have to probably figure out where in South Korea, we're gonna have to get you a specialist. I'm like, stop, (laughs) back up, what? (laughs) That's exactly what I told him. Stop. <laughs> what did you just say? He's like, Hodgkin's lymphoma. I'm like, that's cancer, right? And he's like, yes. Oh, yeah, you just couldn't figure it out. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> and I'm like, it could it be anything else? And he's like, well, could be an infection, but I don't think so. Okay, so you're telling me I have cancer. And he's like, yeah, yes. I'm like, okay, all right. So in my head, I'm trying to process that, and it's not really sinking in at this point. But at the same time, that very day, Shannon was getting on a flight to New Orleans with her cousin for her cousin's birthday okay. down in New Orleans to party. Because, you know, before Mardi Gras, or leading up to it fact, was her birthday. Tuesday, there's a lot of stuff. So it was her birthday. They were going. So I'm starting to process this. I'm like, well, do we really know it's cancer? Because i got to have a follow-up on Monday. So do I really want to bother her with this? <laughs> until? So I sat on it all weekend. Which probably made it harder for you because you're it was, chewing in your own head. We talked on that Saturday night. Yeah. And my cousin, who I was with, is also a nurse. And I asked him, did you go get your cough checked? Because I was on him every weekend or all the, all the time I was on him. Yeah. And um, did you get your cough checked? And he's like, well, I've, I've been, you know, I went and saw a doctor. We'll see. And I go, Sorrel, my cousin, please tell him he needs to figure this out. He's not listening. And the whole time he knew, but he just didn't want to tell me mm. because he didn't want to ruin our weekend. And there's nothing they could have done about it anyway. So Monday I went in to a different doctor and they just confirmed the results. 
So that time they were, once again, like, yeah, we'll see what specialists we can find here in South Korea. And at that point, I'm just like, stop. If I have cancer, I'm going back to San Diego. I'm going to go get treated at Balboa. And I'm going to be with my family as I go through this. Well, hey, that's really up to your command. I'm like, exactly. It is up to my command, and that would be me. <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh, so you're kind of... I was the executive officer out at the base. So, so That's awesome. I, I kind of knew where the general would take it, and I knew where my boss was going to go with that. So they got, I found out on the 22nd of January, 27th of January, I was on a plane back to California. That's cool. So you didn't get any pushback? Nothing oh, like not that. at all. That's awesome. The minute they knew, uh, they, you know, they tried saying, well, we could send you to Hawaii. And I'm like, guys, my family's in San, near San Diego. Let's just do the obvious and yeah. go to San Diego. Yeah. And so they got me to Wounded Warrior Battalion. And that's where I was for eight months, just assigned to Wounded Warrior Battalion, uh, enjoying eight months away from work while I went through treatments and, and